All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Shifting Sands of Security and Compliance in the Cloud. I am Sunny Shi. Uh, work at Stacklit. Previously was at Hulu and Capital One. Have some hobbies, have some social media. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, so, what is good about the cloud? Uh, number one, you get to go fast, right? So you get to go like Sonic. Um, these benefits mean that you get a lot of VC money if you add cloud to your tech or to your product, which is very good. Um, it's also web scale, of course. Uh, you get to use Amazon servers instead of your own. Uh, but also, you don't have to because there's this thing called serverless, and it's also pretty cool. I heard you also get money for that. Um, and then developers, they can do stuff quickly, and you don't have to wait for those annoying server provisioning people, you know. So um, you also get to go to cool parties and cool conferences like this one, which I think is a great perk. Um, there are some downsides, though, and that would include breaking things. Uh, the first of which is companies get hacked. Um, on top of that, uh, something like a misconfigured S3 bucket can lead to data loss. Um, I'm just noticing the timer is not on. Uh, <laughs> so I think I have infinite time. Uh, costs can start to go through the roof. Um, and then engineers in charge of your cloud uh, at your company, they start looking like, uh, they start looking like sad Keanu. Um, this is an interesting statistic from Gartner. Through 2025, 99% of cloud security failures will be the customer's fault, um, which means it's your fault, not the cloud. And that's what your CISO will look like, sad Affleck. Um, but of course, we're engineers. And I'm going to have some code here, so feel free to take pictures and stuff of this, because it's going to be super useful. Um, let's start by writing some Python. So you know, we want to go check those buckets, right? Uh, so let's start uh, importing Boda 3. We'll write this check actions function. Um, but then we realized, oh, we actually need some more code for that, because we also got to iterate over all, all the buckets. And then after we iterate over the, all the buckets, uh, let's just print that out to the console, because uh, that would be super useful. Um, but then we realized we actually want to do like messaging, so Slack. Uh, but then someone said they actually want it in the form of an email, so we can write that code too. Uh, and then that's all good, but then what about unit tests, right? Uh, so let's also just write like 3,000 lines of unit tests for this. Um, and that should, that should be great. Uh, but now we've got to do that for all these other AWS resources here. So we'll, we'll be employed for a long time. Uh, <laughs> and we also get to do it for all these other cloud providers and passes and whatever. Uh, so clearly there's a problem here because I'm just running this on my MacBook here. And when I was making the slides, I actually got this message. It said I was writing too much code. Uh, and then it, my, my, my browser died. So I can't do it for all these other providers and all those other resources because my computer's going to die. Um, here's where we get into cloud custodians. So we write rules and policies in the easy to understand YAML DSL, and we construct policies from the vocabulary of filters and actions. So all that stuff that we had to write before, that's all one line of YAML, two lines of YAML. Uh, it's open source, and it commoditizes governance, which means that you as an engineer, you don't care about governance, uh, but somebody at your company probably really does, and so they get to write the policies instead. Um, you get to write policies for that for one resource and carry that knowledge forward to all these other resources and cloud providers that are, that are supported. Um, and on top of that, it's serverless, it's event-driven, we have auto-remediation, security, compliance, cost savings, tagging, all of these different domains. Um, cloud custodian can help you target these problems. Um, and of course, it's production grade, uh, hundreds of users in all sorts of environments, so big companies, small companies, um, huge banks, media companies, et cetera, we all, uh, they all use custodian. If we take a look at this policy here, uh, first we select a resource type. In this case, we're talking about S3. We define the, uh, the filters that we care about. So this is a cross-account filter that's basically saying we want to whitelist um, you know, uh, access to uh, this, the, any bucket from that account ID. And then finally, the action section, which is a little bit long, but it's basically saying send this notification out via Slack to the resource owner. Um, and also send it via email. So one command, write the file, run it, you're good. So next time you need to enforce a rule in your cloud, come check out Cloud Custodian. Uh, you can pip install, c7n, or docker pull it. We're also on Slack and Gitter. Uh, and then also we're over at KubeCon. So come over by the expo hall. Uh, we're at ContribFest, and we also have an introduction to Cloud Custodian. Uh, both of those sessions are on Friday, so come check us out. And I'm right on time. So thank you, everyone.